I want you to imagine this scenario. You have a bank account. It's got $1,000 in it. Life's good. It's a personal checking. But now with this new proposed rule, the IRS can monitor all the inflows, all the outflows of that bank account. No, guess what? They can also monitor all the inflows and all the outflows of all personal accounts, whether they're checking or savings, uh, business bank accounts, whether they're checking or savings, or even investment accounts, whether they're personal again or business. This is what's proposed right now. I wanna go through this and dig deeper and talk to you about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Patrick Kenny. We talk about finances on this channel. If you're new around here, be sure to click that subscribe button. And of course, like this video if you want more topics like today, where typically I don't talk about the news. And frankly, this be became a video because of the news. I started seeing this repetitive, repetitive uh, headline come across my feed. And it was from people on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook going nuts. And I figured instead of you know, taking advice from somebody and looking at a headline, let's dive into the proposal itself that everybody is talking about that uh, makes everybody go crazy. So let's get into it. I'm gonna get on this, this uh, screen here. And first of all, I'll drop the link to this entire document, which is pages and pages and pages uh, in the description below. But as you can see here, this is on page number 88, and the, the document is titled General Explanations of the Administration's Fiscal Year 2022 Revenue Proposals. Now, before we get into this, proposals is the key word here. Nothing has happened, it's a proposal, so don't freak out. And obviously in the comments, I do want you to share your opinions on it, but with that said, let's talk about the current law and why this is happening. Business income is subject to limited information reporting. Current information reporting of gross receipts exists for only certain types of revenue, like 1099 miscellaneous or NECs or Ks or whatever it is, and there's no information reporting on total deductible expenses. Why does that matter? Well, because of that, check this out. The IRS is estimating they are losing $166 billion a year due to underreporting. Let's call a spade a spade. Now they're saying the scale of the revenue loss is driven primarily by lack of comprehensive information reporting. So what they are trying to do is they are bringing in a proposal right here. We can read it where anyone with over $600 in their bank account is subject to tracking on all inflows and outflows. And when you look at this, this is inflows and outflows with a breakdown of physical cash, transaction with foreign accounts and transfers to and from another account with the same owner. It's tracking everything. This requirement would apply to all business and personal accounts from financial institutions, including bank, loan, and investment accounts, like we talked about at the beginning, with the exception of accounts below $600. Guys, we all know a lot of people have accounts with more than $600. This is effectively impacting the majority of the United States. Furthermore, what I find extremely interesting, if you kind of scroll down, whatever, this is good stuff, scroll down here. Let's start to throw in that crypto word. What's the real reason behind doing this? Well, now let's start to read. Similar reporting requirements would apply to crypto asset exchanges and custodians. Separately, reporting requirements would apply in cases in which taxpayer buy crypto assets from one broker and transfer, transfer crypto, uh, crypto assets to another broker and businesses that receive crypto assets and transaction with a market value more than 10,000 would report such transactions. I think this has a lot to do with this proposed law. Crypto, as we all know, is very difficult to track from a government standpoint, from the IRS's standpoint, very difficult to track. We all know this, it's no secret, everyone knows this, this isn't a newsflash. But now throwing that in there, this is creating a scenario where we're basically gonna track everything of yours. 
Essentially, we're gonna do a real-time audit on all of your income and expenses, real-time, personal, business, investment, doesn't matter as long as you have over $600. This is affecting a lot of people. And you might be thinking this, you might be thinking, well, Patrick, why would I care? I'm not doing anything wrong. They can look at my accounts. I don't care. That's fine. And I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm not saying I'm doing anything wrong. I'm not saying he or she is doing anything wrong. It's not about that. What it's about, first of all, is privacy, which does the Fourth Amendment, does the Fourth Amendment even matter anymore at this point? I don't know. And this might spark some debate in the comments. That's fine. Let me know your, your comments. But also, you might not be doing anything wrong right now at all. We all know that there's certain businesses that banks hate. Banks don't want to deal with businesses. Sometimes banks don't want to deal with commodity trading businesses. Sometimes banks don't want, most banks don't want to deal with the cannabis industry right now. Imagine the IRS starts tracking stuff and they don't like that. Now you thought the bank was on your side. Well, now it's like one big bank. They're tracking everybody. They've got every transaction. But that's not my point. My point is this, read this line. The secretary would be given broad authority to issue regulations necessary to implement this proposal. They're going to be able to do whatever they need to make changes on. And keep in mind, they don't know what they don't know. So just because what you're doing now is fine, you're like, I'm not worried. What if they start this and then suddenly they start implementing changes that do impact you? because now they have the data to back up what is going on. Now they have the data to back up and put it into legislation and more changes come. It's more of the domino effect that I'm getting at here. So this is not something about, ah, shouldn't let them track it, whatever. Privacy is privacy. At this point, there's no privacy in our life. We know that. They're tracking us every day we live. We all know that. That is no secret. Look at our cell phones. We're getting tracked every day. But the point is, is what we are doing from a financial standpoint, in this case, is not only going to be just tracked, but tracked with such intricacy from all inflows and outflows and such authority that changes can be made in the future that this can potentially become a domino effect into future policy changes. You know, I'm not saying one way or another is right or wrong. In fact, I've always thought this is where we're heading. I've always thought this is going to become more and more automated to the point where audits don't need to exist. They can naturally do this from an algorithmic standpoint. You might say, well, audit me then. Maybe that's what you're saying. Why do this? Just come audit me. I'm not doing anything wrong. Think about that. Audits cost money. Audits take humans out into the field, hours it costs money. Everything is about revenue. That is an expense. How about let's create a proposal Let's try to get it through under the radar at page 88 of a document. And let's see if we can automatically audit everyone. That way we can find that missing $166 billion while still proposing more tax hikes. Mm, sounds like a plan to me. Let me know your comments below. Appreciate this video. Appreciate you and you're taking your time on this video. Click the subscribe button and of course, click the like button if you want more like this. We'll see you in the next video.